Welcome to the Mischief, I'm Valen and this is Hexerai, a new magic mod up and coming and still in development. This magic mod focuses a lot on witch lore and well, yes, you've got magic brooms, you've got herbs, you've got all sorts of cool little devices including new armor sets, weapons, tools, storage options, unique crafting aesthetics, and there's tons of new world gen that is pretty much focused on the swamp area, though some of it is in the jungle. For starters, there are new structures as well as a few different options. This is just one of the houses that may be found out in random swamps in the world. But more importantly, you'll find something along the lines of this, a dark coven colony. It's populated pretty much by witches, but this is a really great place to find a lot of your starter gear if you can find one of these places. If not, well, you can always make your own and that's what I'm here to help you with. One of the first things you probably want to do is get into a swamp biome and get some access to certain herbs and other plant life as you may find it. Now in this case, I'm showing you a little garden that is one of the things that may spawn in one of the dark coven colonies, but you may also find these different herbs, or herbs as you'd like to pronounce it, throughout the world, just kind of like uh, covering mostly swamplands at this point. You also may find some other things that are just a little more aesthetically pleasing, like these little lily pad flowers. But as for some of the herbs that you might find in the world around in the swamplands, you're definitely going to want to grab and collect these or at least harvest them and try and get some seeds for them. You can also break a whole bunch of grass in hopes of getting some sage seeds, which are also going to be quite valuable. Now some of these plants that you're probably going to want to collect or at least collect the drops from are going to be things like mandrake plants, which as you grow them up, they will drop different items just by right clicking on them, which is pretty darn convenient, allowing you to kind of get a whole bunch more so you can plant them pretty much on grass. But the sage seeds that you may find in broken grass, you will have to uh, plant on tilled farmland. Now in these wondrous houses, you may find all sorts of fantastical loot. Now I have this one pretty well kitted out, but you may find many of these items individually or in parts and pieces. Specifically, you may find yourself either a witch's hat, robe, or boots, uh, or perhaps a combination of any of those on an armor stand in any of those buildings that I've shown you so far. This is actually a very strong outfit. When you compare it to some of the stats that it has on these things, now the set that I'm wearing is currently enchanted, but with, even without it being enchanted, it's better than iron and slightly weaker than a diamond set of armor, but only slightly. Now, the biggest drawback though is that, well, you don't have pants, so you're going to be walking around without anything covering your bum. But otherwise, they do have a low durability, so you will want to put an unbreaking enchantment on this, if not a, a mending one, or just make yourself a whole bunch of sets of these so that you can keep going. But they are relatively inexpensive to make. You can start making your own with a mixing cauldron. Mixing cauldron is just made from a regular cauldron, just a few torches added and a little reinforcing level of iron on top of that will get you one of these place it down, it actually creates a light source nearby, which is pretty darn convenient. And this is going to be your main crafting item for most of Hexerai. It accepts water, it accepts lava, and it accepts a few other types of fluids as well, which we'll get into. It'll hold two buckets worth of any of those. And as there are several recipes you can make with it, for instance, by using JEI, and I look for the uses of the mixing cauldron, it has a lot of information on here. To understand how best to read this, basically this is the amount of fluid that it's going to be using and what type of fluid, in this case, water, in this case, lava. And it'll use a bucket and a half. This one uses about a third of a bucket. If you go over here, this is going to be the output. These are all the ingredients that you need to put inside of it. When all of them are in there and you've got enough water, it will automatically process and craft the item into the output. This is giving you one infused fabric and it's going to leave one and two thirds buckets out of a possible two buckets of water. Knowing the infused fabric is used to make some of these witches clothes, this is something I'm going to show you how to make. So let's start off with four leather, and you can just right click to open up a UI and you can put the things in here. Then you look and they are represented on the cauldron. You can do so to fill it up completely, but in this case, I'm actually going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to throw them all in. 
and if, as long as you're not catching on any of the lips like you see here it's catching on the back ledge you're going to want to make sure that you're doing that you it's easiest if you stand up on top and just throw down into the cauldron and i just like how that works because you get to see the really pretty animation and how really wonderful this is there we go now just by right clicking it's just going to open up the uh the ui again a again this is the area that you're going to put the ingredients this is the output and this is for a special occasion that we'll discuss a little bit. Taking out the infused fabric, you need to make a whole bunch of these. As you can see here, it'll take at least 17 pieces to make a full set of three pieces of a witch's hat, witch's boots, and witch's robe. And that's the basics on how you can use a mixing cauldron. I recommend that you keep yourself a few of these, specifically because you're going to have partial amounts of liquids or something. Now you can, of course, just break it and put down another one if you really want to and it'll eliminate any kind of liquid that's in there without spilling it but i personally think that just having a few of these nearby is probably going to be a good choice now as i'm sure you notice that the infused fabric that makes these clothes requires a lot of leather a bit of string and a bit of black dye so you will likely need to have either harvested a lot of materials from just animals in the world or have your own farm going Personally, it's a really good idea if you have your own farm going so that you can make this, animal fat. When you kill most of the uh, passive mobs that are out there, they may have a chance of dropping an animal fat piece or pieces, depending upon if you have a looting bonus going on. And you can use it to make something called tallow. Combining it with a little bit of honeycomb in your mixing cauldron, it will automatically form tallow with a chance of getting a tallow impurity. Filling this back up with some water, tossing in a bit of honeycomb and a bit of animal fat, it'll automatically start going. And if you want, you can click here and you can see the recipes for what is happening. And you can see all of them without having to look it up in JEI. But ultimately, you see there that it just finished and there is no output. Nothing is here, but the water is now this kind of murky stuff. This is actually tallow. You can even bucket it out if you want, and you can see it says bucket of tallow. Put it back in, and you're good to go either way. Now, when you make those, there's always a chance in the output that you might get some of these tallow impurities, which has potential to be a really, really good food alternative. Now, you only may get like one or so uh, on rare occasions, but if you have a bunch of these, you can keep on eating them after you're already full, thus filling up your saturation bar even more. Now, what am I going to do with this tallow? Well, there is something else besides just potentially getting one chance of getting a little bit of a snack item, and that is by putting a bit of lava into another mixing cauldron, or the same one that didn't have tallow in it. You could always bucket it out if you so desire. And then tossing in some iron and some nuggets. And this will make you one of these, a dipper. Now, a dipper can be placed on top of a mixing cauldron. Just aim at the lip, and you see this little device starts forming around here. This is basically a candle dipper. Here's the catch, though, is that you can put other things on here if you really want to. You could put, like, plants or something on there and it's just going to be for prettiness that's that's pretty much it you, you don't really need it to do that stuff but sneak clicking takes those back off uh, primarily though you're going to want to put string on here and that is so that it can start dipping the string in the tallow and then over time it will start gathering on there just like real candle making and you will be making candles now the candles in Hexerai have a time limit. Currently they last a little over a half an hour, like real life half an hour. Um, they may have special abilities and things like that added to them in the future. At the moment they don't, and they're just aesthetic. Uh, you can also dye them by combining them in a crafting grid with some kind of dye, or dipping them in some kind of liquid dye equivalent. And when they're done, they start making these cute little noises like this, and you just right click and you get them back into your inventory there we go i already had a bunch of candles here and you can put them down now i'm actually going to take you outside for a moment just so you can see they are colored uh, in this case they've already been colored at least and i'm going to put down another one and you can see that they will actually you know spread out and intermingle with them taking a flint and steel i can light one two three or four etc now I can hear some mobs outside. That's not a good sign. Especially in a swamp, you're going to end up having a lot of mob visitors that you don't want nearby. So that's another reason why you're going to want to get a whole bunch of sage. Using a crafting grid, I'm going to take up a bunch of this sage here, some string in the middle, and we're going to make sage bundles. 
Next, take a, some sticks, a, some kind of slab and a string, and make yourself a drying rack. Then you can click this drying rack underneath some kind of surface like this, and you can take your sage bundles and hang them on here so that they can dry. Once dried, You'll have a burnable version, which can give you a peaceful effect in a large area. But first, you'll need one of these, a sage burning plate. Simply toss them into your lava-filled mixing cauldron, and you'll create yourself one of these sage burning plates in a really cool animation style. I just love it. All right, so now that I've got two of these, and I don't need any of them actually, I can take my dried sage bundle, put it on the sage burning plate, take a flint and steel, and light it. And what this does, when you right-click on it, it explains. You see sage clouds gently purifying the area. And by clicking on here, it kind of gives you like a little visual uh, notice of the area that it's trying to cover. You can see like there's this ring of clouds going on around here. That is the distance for a peaceful effect in the area. Doesn't mean that the mobs that are already in the area are going to just disappear. It just means that there won't be any more spawning in that area. And this lasts for quite some time. Looking at the dried sage bundle, it says it lasts for about 60 minutes, and that's IRL minutes. That's about three full day and night cycles for Minecraft. And if you want to, you can actually put this out, you can pick it up, and it will keep its durability lost in this case. Then you can put it back down if you want and relight it for later so that you can keep your you know sage bundles for when you need it in case you're out like exploring or something and you don't want to waste these things. Now something else you can do with a lava-filled mixing cauldron is fill it with sand. This will create yourself a bunch of these little herb jars, or herb jars as you might like to have it pronounced. And they're actually similar to, uh, some might think that it's like a uh, storage drawers mod. You can put it down and it will just kind of, you know, create a version here. But it does have to have a flat surface for it to, to stand on. It will stand on trapdoors that are open like this. Uh, if you sneak right click it, you will open up and see what is inside of it. You can actually have more or less um, any kind of plant life can be put in there of some sort. And it will display what it is on there. And you can actually see through on the opposite side that it has it on the other side as well and some kind of remnant of how much is in there. Now, if you wanted to, you can actually just like punch it for getting one, you can sneak punch it to get all of them out there and the image will go away. Now that's not all though, because you can actually name these. Just take the herb jar to a uh, an anvil and rename it, and you can get yourself things like this, you know, belladonna. If you don't, then you end up getting things like those, but ultimately you can always name them as you like and, and put different kinds of, well, plant products in your jars. But they can store quite a lot uh, of these items in there. For instance, this one has over 200 in here, and I, I think it goes well, well above that. Now that's not all though, we still have a couple really fantastic items to show you, and I've been saving the best ones for the last. This is the coffer. It opens up and closes as you approach it, which is pretty darn cool. I, I love the aesthetic of it. It shows you everything that's in it just by looking inside of it as well. So if you wanted to know what's in something like a chest or something, it, it shows it there, and it also shows you. This is a button that is currently not in use in the version that I am in, but you see that you can store lots of really cool stuff in here. And yes, you can store stacks of them. I was just putting one of each of these items for the sake of just aesthetics. Now, if you want to, you just punch it and you take it with you. It's, it's a, a make it and take it chest. It's fantastic. They're of course nameable, as you can see here at the top, just like the other ones with the uh, the anvil. And you can also combine it in a crafting grid with uh, different colors. Let's take this blue, and this will make it into something a bit darker blue. Let's make it a little bit more so. Actually, let's go with a uh, light blue. There we go. And if I put this down, it still has all the stuff in it. Uh, let me grab that blue dye, and I will put that inside as well. There we are. And you can see that this is just a customizable, customizable thing. You can have a whole bunch of these with you. Really nice. One other thing I'm going to mention real quick is, and that is candelabras. Uh, candelabras are indefinite light sources that light up more than a torch does. It's made from four candles plus a chain and three iron ingots in a water-filled uh, mixing cauldron. You'll get one of these things, and it will attach underneath a surface or on top of one. 
By putting it on top of one, it will form a little stand like this. By putting it underneath, it will try and attach uh, kind of in the inverse where it will have a stand going up to the top. If you have a chain coming down, it actually connects to the chain with a little chain of its own, which is really nice and aesthetic. And you'll see these throughout the Dark Coven villages. All right, last but not least, let's talk about brooms. This little beauty here is the, the Broom Faster 5000, and uh, I've got it highly customized for your, uh, you know, for you to take home right now. It's only $99.95. No, I'm, I'm kidding. All right, so these here are just fantastic. There's two versions, and you can upgrade them. They're kind of modular, um, and you make them your own. In this case, I've got a little key ring with an XP bottle at the front. It, it's just, <laughs> it's fabulous. So let's start on how to make one of these, and then I'll tell you how you can customize it. Essentially, you're going to need some willow logs, uh, which there are plenty of willow trees out in the, uh, the, the swamp itself. A couple blocks of gold, uh, a couple wheat, and a mandrake root, which is just an, an one of the drops from a mandrake plant, uh, put into some water with a bottle of blood. Now here's the thing, the bottle of blood... If you hold shift over this, it says acquired by placing a blood sigil inside a mixing cauldron, then jumping inside three times to bleed into the cauldron, then take a bottle to bottle it up. Yeah, it's a little bit gruesome, but it, it, it works. So to make a blood sigil, you will need a little bit of lava, some polished blackstone, and a bit of redstone dust. Mix all that up in your cauldron, and you get a blood sigil. Now I'm just going to grab one from the creative inventory. You don't need to see me do that again. But if you put this into a mixing cauldron, by right-clicking, open it up, and you can see here that there is actually a symbol that seems to match. This is what that is for. Open it up, and you now have this little kind of sigil on top of it. Be careful, it's going to hurt when you land. And then jump in and make sure you've got yourself plenty of health. Because it will hurt a little bit when you find the center. There's one, two, and three. And you have currently sacrificed enough to get yourself a bottle of blood. And that is how you get it. All right, so taking this thing filled with water, you notice that there is still the sigil in the bottom. It shouldn't make a difference as long as you don't have blood in there right now. Put in your willow logs, blocks of gold, wheat, and your mandrake root, plus one bottle of blood, and it will start flushing your troubles down the drain while it makes a broom and leaves you with that uh, bottle of blood still. There we go, and in this case, I'm going to grab the willow broom out of there, and you can put this down just by right-clicking on the ground. And there we go, we now have a broom. Sneak right click and you can access all of its information. You'll have a little settings bar over here, which means you, when you're not on it, it will slowly drop down to the ground. This is usually a really good idea, but if you want it to just be pretty while it's sitting there and not doing anything, it will stay in the air while you're not riding it. So if you fall off of it or die or something like that, then you'll pretty much just like uh, it'll be stuck in the air where it was. So it could be really high up or something. Be, be very aware of that. But otherwise, it just looks really cool just kind of floating here. Now, right clicking, you notice that it has a broom brush. If I remove this, it's just a stick and falls to the ground. Don't worry, your gold blocks have still got use. You just need to put the brush back on there. No brush durability is used unless you're actually actively on this broom. Satchels allow you a measure of storage. There's three different sizes. The small satchel just requires a bunch more leather, a bit of string and gold nugget. The medium satchel requires a small one plus more leather and string. And the large satchel requires a small one and a medium one plus a little bit more string and leather to stitch them both together onto your broom. So if I take the large satchel and put it on here, it's actually a full chest's worth and it also is a combination of both a small and a large one. It's, it's kind of neat. Let me uh, make this float so you can see it a little bit better. It will kind of rise and fall over time while it's just kind of like sitting here idling. But on the front, you've got your miscellaneous area. This is for decorations. You can actually make some gold rings, which are just bits of gold and some lava, and it will add a, a decoration to the front of it. Alternately, you can make a broom chain, and this is a really new item that just adds a bit of fluff to it, and I absolutely love it. So if you take this broom chain and combine it with something, let's say a bottle of blood in this case, it could be just about anything. Uh, actually, here, let's, let's make it a mixing cauldron, and we can put that on here, and it will then create a small aesthetic cauldron on the tip of this instead, which is just really a really nice touch. There we go, I can throw all these things in here and then I can break my broom just like I would a boat. And look at that, 
I have my broom with me as well as all of its contents. It even tells you the different upgrades it has and the durability left on the broom brush. Sneak right clicking, I can place it into the world. Just right clicking it, I get on the broom. You'll want to be careful though because you don't want to, you know, run into things and just be aware this broom is flammable. It is not the inflammable type. Right now, looking up and down, you're allowed to do it just like you're in a boat. Just think you're actually in a boat and you should be fine. You're also going to be sitting side saddle, but if you want to go up, press and hold the spacebar, and then you'll just instantly start heading upwards into the sky. If you want to head down, you're probably going to have to press uh, sneak or shift by default, but uh, I changed the key bindings in that case so that it is now S, and that also kind of slowly backs me up a little bit, just because I found that to be a little bit less likely for me to kind of jump off and fall to my demise. And then you can just kind of fly around in your broom as you desire. And it's just really nice. It's a slow one. It leaves these little particles with little leaves and stuff behind it. It's really just lovely. Now, if you sneak, oh no, I fell off my broom. Uh, remember, I told you if, you, if you kept it hovering mode, it will stay up there hovering. So it's, it's not going to go anywhere. But... This can also save your broom from falling into something like lava or other fires, things like that, or, or explosive situations where your broom might get destroyed. So it's kind of a, a give and take scenario. Now to nerd pull my way back up. There we go, just coming in for a landing and it's good to go. Now these are just regular willow brooms. You can still upgrade them. Notice the broom brush on this one is just a regular color. This one is a little bit more enha enhanced. Sneak right clicking, I've got an enhanced broom brush. It's got double the durability of the other one. You can also enchant these with mending or unbreaking to make them last even longer. But you know what? Why not just go the extra mile and make them? In order to make a broom brush, whether even if it's an enhanced broom one, so that you don't have to keep making an entire whole broom each time, this is why you really need to make an herb farm, because you're going to want all of these different ingredients so you can make yourself a broom brush, whether it be a regular one or an enhanced one. A regular one is made with just a few simple items, yellow dock leaves, mugwort leaves, mandrake roots, and some wheat. Whereas an enhanced one takes that wet version of it and adds in a few other herbs in this case and makes it last even longer. Now that's not the end of it. Remember how I said that there was a, uh, you know, these can catch on fire and you, you don't want to lose them? Well, there's also the mahogany broom. This one here is fire resistant. Uh, it requires a netherite ingot in its crafting and two bottles of blood, plus some other similar, similar things. Plus, of course, mahogany logs, which you will need to find in the jungle area. Once you've made one of these, then you'll have yourself a really slick and much more durable and even faster broom than before. I have not customized this one, but you can see that I'm already going much faster than I was before uh, when I was on the broom, the, uh, the regular willow broom. But it's, it's nothing to sniff at, though. I mean, the willow broom is great, and you can still have flight uh, just at the cost of, well, a little bit of time and effort and a little bit of uh, materials. And as you can see, it does have a little bit different color uh, scheme to it, and it can be upgraded just like the other brooms that I've already shown you. And there you have it, folks. Uh, another bit by bit in the pipe for you. We've got Hexerai. It's a really great mod. I hope you guys enjoyed this bit by bit. If so, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, be sure to come visit us on Twitch. Click the notification bell. And until next time, folks, I'll see ya.